I'm Drew, I'm the Aspiring Master, and welcome to show two of Politically Correct Correction. Okay, last week I discussed a couple of reasons why I think political correctness isn't working in our world. I didn't get any comments below, but I had a number of friends that, that talked to me on the phone. First off, uh, one of my friends said, hey, can you move the camera up? So I've moved the camera up just a bit. She says, I don't like, I don't like staring into your nostrils, and uh, I, I could totally get that. Okay, so the camera's moved up so that uh, we have a little bit better framing. We've got um, a little bit better lighting in the background today. Um, I've adjusted my lighting just a bit so that it's not quite as distracting. I got a little bit, of, got rid of a uh, little bit of the shadows in the eyes and all of that stuff. Anyway, um, that's probably going to be cut out. So, last week I talked about some reasons why I don't think politically correctness works and why I don't think that the political correctness, the way that we're utilizing it really, is going to work for unifying society. I talked about uh, the fear that it generates uh, around talking to people of different races, talking to people of different sexes, um, just in general society. Because one, I don't think that the rules are really all that clear. I don't think that we're, we're really clear on what it is that we want. And number two, we don't really understand what politically correct means to every person. We all have our different interpretations of what it means, what it means to us, what is politically correct for me, what is politically correct for you. And so we don't have those discussions, we don't have those um, rules around what it is that we're doing. And so with some really, really ill-defined and broad rule base on politically correction, it causes more fear than it does um, actual uh, better behavior, which is what we're after. So last week I got some really good feed, be, feedback from some friends. Uh, somebody uh, recommended that I have some camera positioning, uh, position it up just a bit. And so I've done that. And another good friend of mine was talking about the way that I was editing. So I'm going to do some editing changes this time um, around the words that, that appear. And I'm also going to be doing some smash cutting instead of the, the transition that I did last time. He, find, he said, I find it disoriented. Uh, he's a very good filmmaker and I really respect his opinion. Also, uh, a friend of mine said that, he said, you know, you did some really good opinion stuff, but I'd really like to see some facts and, and stuff behind it, some studies and stuff. So I've gone out and I, I can't say that I've scoured the internet, but I've looked for a couple hours trying to find relevant studies that have been done around politically correct language, political correctness in general, and I've only found two that I found significant. And they may see, seem opposite, um, but they really aren't. So the first study that I found that was relevant was actually sort of a, a poll or a census on uh, how many people thought political correctness worked, basically. And uh, it's, I, I found that the best way to describe it is to read a little bit of an article in spikedonline.com, spikedonline.com. So please go there and check out the article. I'll have a link below. This is what it says on Spiked Online. So I'm gonna read, read their quote directly. And uh, you can go and look at the full article. It's actually worth a look. So, but for my purposes now, I'm just gonna quote a couple of lines from them and just make some uh, conclusions based on this. Those opposed to political correctness are cast as white right-wing troglodytes, clinging to the last vestiges of their privilege. The charge of political correctness is often used by those in a position of privilege to silence debates raised by marginalized people says a writer in Vox. And yet, a new major survey of public attitudes in the U.S. has turned this notion on its head. According to Hidden Tribes, a study of American polarized landscape, a whopping 80% of Americans agree with the statement, political correctness is a problem in our country. Remarkably, this distaste for political correctness was common in both sexes, all ages, and all races. 75% of black Americans agree that PC is a problem compared with 79% of whites. So here's where I'm going to interrupt the flow of Spike's commentary. 
This article is written as if it's all black Americans. Remember, only 8,000 people were polled, and I'm sure that there was only a, 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 like a, a portion of that that was black Americans. So I disagree with the way that this article is being written about this because they're making conclusions rather than saying uh, this is a hypothesis or this, this is more most likely. They're just saying, this is it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and read that again. So, remarkably, this distaste of political correctness was common in both sexes, all ages, and all races. There are only some marginal differences. 75% of black Americans agree that PC is a problem, compared with 79% of whites. For other ethnic groups, the proportion actually raises. 82% of Asians, 87% of Hispanics, and 88% of American Indians think PC is a problem. So, if it's not ethnic majorities clamoring for PC censorship, who is? The Hidden Tribes researchers identified a section of society which is labeled progressive activists. This group includes those most wedded to political correctness. Only 30% see it as a problem. It is characterized as being young, cosmopolitan, and liberal. But it makes up just 8% of the U.S. population. They are also disproportionately white. 80% of the progressive activists surveyed were white compared to the 69% of those surveyed overall. They are also overwhelmingly better off. Progressive activists are three times more likely to have postgraduate education and twice as likely to be earning over $100,000 a year. Okay, so this you can have the link below to go to the entire article, but that basically said hey, you know what, um, and this is in the U.S., obviously, I'm in Canada, I, I'm assuming that Canadians may differ a bit, but I don't think so. I think that we're, we're running around the same numbers. But again, I don't have the statistics on that, I'm just pulling that out of my butt. When we're taking a look at something as, uh, where political correctness is, is huge in the States, um, where most people are discontent with that, uh, kind of goes with what the reasons kind of go with what I was uh, talking about on my last video around political correctness, creating fear and covering up a problem that really needs to be looked at, which is uh, self-esteem and figuring out how to be able to start creating self-esteem, not only in, in ourselves, but in our kids and uh, allowing them to, to grow up in a world where they feel confident about themselves and that confident confidence um, dissuades us from using politically correct language because when you have that kind of confidence generally a lot of the the need for political correct language goes away okay um, and and again yeah, a hypothesis that we that we talk about now there was another study that I ran across and like I said these are few and far between this is a really really unstudied field which is is surprising considering how um, relevant and powerful the movement around political correctness is. So uh, the other study was a study done at Cornell University and it seems to be uh, a really good study but I'm going to actually tear it apart a little bit here and uh, only from a scientific standpoint even though I, I, I think that the study was actually a really good study and I think that the hypothesis uh, the hypothesis that they come up with the two hypotheses at the end of this study are a little bit off skewed because it looks like they're coming to conclusions based on one study uh, with a few hundred people as opposed to doing uh, an, anyway I, that's, anyway I, I, was, I am going to talk about that after I tell you what the study is about so here's the study Cornell University I will have a link down in the description for you guys to go and take a look at it if you want to and uh, please feel free to comment figure out uh, what you agree or disagree with on this video down below make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah all of that stuff that youtubers say in their videos okay so here's how the study worked the researchers asked hundreds of college students to brainstorm new business ideas for an empty restaurant space on campus but first, they separated the students into groups and instructed some of the groups to discuss an instance of political correctness they'd heard or personally experienced. 
They did this to effectively put the notion of political correctness into their collective heads and impose what they call a PC norm on the group as a whole. The researchers found that groups that had both men and women and had been exposed to the PC norm went on to generate more ideas and more novel ideas for how to use the vacant lot that the mixed gender groups that hadn't discussed political correctness. So as they said before, that if, if the work group was exposed to uh, talking about PC norms and uh, people's experiences with them, that they became more creative. And the, the groups that weren't were less creative. And so the, the hypothesis or what they're saying is if you, it, they're, they're trying to kind of hedge that, that PC, the PC norm, uh, as they're calling it, so a political correctness, if it's brought to the forefront and discussed and talked about, as opposed to uh, sitting in the background and being misinterpreted, I guess, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing on this, that there, that, that PC, uh, political correctness is good. They're, I mean, they're basically doing a study that's saying, political correctness is good, look, it's allowing us to be creative. And the truth is, actually, that's not true. In any discussion, right? In any discussion. Now they did this with hundreds of students with, and they separated them into groups. And they found in those groups um, that if they talked about political correctness and how it affected people and everybody gave their personal story or talked about something that they personally uh, experienced or saw or, or had an opinion on, that it allowed people to be more comfortable with each other. I totally agree. And it makes psychological sense. When you are familiar with people, you will be more open and trusting. When you see how other people act and react, when you see how other people act and react to certain things that you're talking about, so when you have a, a group discussion that uh, exposes people as people and how they felt all of that stuff, you start to be able to understand who you can trust in the group and you become more familiar or the group becomes more, more familial. Um, so more like a family. So you can, you've got a little bit of breathing room. Whereas when you mash a bunch of people together and you don't get them to talk and you just give them a problem, they're all, hmm, I wonder what they will think and, uh, of me and I wonder what. So all of that stuff goes on. So basically what this study did for me is it just reinforced that, yeah, uh, becoming familiar with people and setting rules and regulations is really a good thing. It's um, uh, let me give you an example. If, if I were to uh, say, I, I'm, I'm a DJ, so say I had a gig tomorrow night and uh, it was a wedding and it was a wedding for some people that I'd never met, uh, never met, never talked to, uh, I don't r really understand them and I was emceeing this event and so when I go in to emcee the event, I'm a little bit more trepidatious. I, I don't, I may not uh, go in and say some, a uh, little bit more risque jokes. I'm going to be way more careful. It's going to be way more generic. Uh, as an MC, it, it just, it's just going to be more generic. Now, if they said, hey, we're having um, the, the, a wedding rehearsal and there's a little bit of a party afterwards, did you want to come and mingle and chat with some people? and? And, and, you know, they invited me out to the party the night before. And so I went there and I shared some experiences with them, watched everybody in action, joked with some people, figured out what my boundaries are. And then the next day went into uh, that same situation. Well, my, my presentation is going to be more familiar with the people. I'm going to know them. They're going to have seen me before. They're going to have a little bit more trust in me. They're going to be a little bit looser and more relaxed. And when you're looser and more relaxed, you're going to be creative. Of course you are. So it's not necessarily that the PC norm is doing this in this instance, because I think that what they're saying or what people are inferring, at least around the, the article from Cornell University here, is that, that, oh look, PC works. And the truth is, no getting to know people works 
But, and now this, again, this is my opinion. I haven't done a bunch of studies on this. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, one study on this is not uh, a way to say that this conclusively says, right? Because anybody can grab this and do it. There should be lots and lots and lots of study on what it is that I'm talking about. There should be really some good focus groups. There should be a whole bunch of things scientifically in order to be able to really understand this. But the truth is, is we don't have conversations. We don't have these talks with each other. And that's one of the problems that I see so much in in anything like this, whether be it political correctness, be it uh, rules in the workplace, be it um, you know wh wh what sexual harassment is or how to how to help um, prevent rape in the future, we're not really talking about these issues. We're not really going in depth about those things that create the environment for these things to happen and how we as a society, we as people, can help stop contributing to that because a lot of the stuff that we do is so unconscious and that we don't think about. Okay, so that's my video for today. I'm going to continue going down this road and talking about this. I'm gonna to talk to some more friends. Um, because I don't have very many subscribers, I can't say that there's gonna be a lot of discussion on this, but as we go, I'll see if I can get more, more subscribers and, and keep going on this. My next segment is I'm probably going to, to bypass this unless I get some really, really good questions coming up. And uh, I'm going to go into the agnostic in the room uh, in my next two week video. So the agnostic in the room is just about being an agnostic, what that means, uh, what the beliefs are around it, and then talking about some of the debates that I see around the theists and the atheists and uh, really trying to put an ag agnostic point of view sort of in between there. Anyway, so that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I wanna thank everybody for coming and looking at my video. I will be seeing you and the next video. I'm Drew, the Aspiring Master.